So Dave, for all alignment technicians out there, the toughest thing is setting tail on a vehicle and making sure that the steering wheel is straight. Are there any shortcuts or tips you can give us? I don't know of shortcuts itself, but the, the fact of the matter, here in Northern Ohio, we live in the Rust Belt, okay? And during the tow setting process, we're gonna be tugging, pulling on the steering linkages somewhat. And what that can do is steer the wheels off center one way or the other, even if I do have the steering wheel locked, I can actually move it there. Uh, Hunter has a thing known as wind tow. It's uh, been there for quite some time, the early 90s. And I'm going to click on the little steering wheel here, adjust tow with wind tow. It's a four-step procedure. Okay. First thing, we're going to level the steering wheel. Uh, notice it says start engine and level steering wheel. On vehicles with hydraulic assist, you need to follow the instruction and do that. If I do have an electric rack or a manual rack, I really technically don't need to start it. But you, know, you can start them all and it's not going to hurt anything either. All right. After that, I'm going to press the ready key. All right. Now, this is not showing me the actual toe angle here. This is showing me how far away from spec I am. Since this is on the outside of the graph, on the negative side, that indicates I need to tow this wheel in to be correct. So let's go ahead and make this adjustment. Is this side over here? Yes. Okay. loose. Okay, adjust it back. Okay, fantastic. At this particular time, we're going to tighten the jam nut itself. We're also, after the jam nut is tight, we're going to flatten the tie rod in back out where it originally was, the center of its travel, and then we'll press the ready key. So now we're on to the left-hand side. This particular wheel here is towed in a specification. We're on the positive side here, so we're going to tow this particular wheel out. Okay. So make the adjustment there. Okay. All right. Now, another very important step as we're setting tow or making any adjustments, any time that we lift, jack a vehicle, or we make an adjustment to a vehicle, we want to jounce this vehicle. And we do this to relax the suspension. And this is an important tip when setting tow also. Okay. And it can, you know, um, uh, give you problems if you don't jounce the vehicle during a tow, tow adjustment. Okay. So I'll jounce the vehicle. Uh, step four is we're going to check the position of the steering wheel uh, right now. What we're going to do is equalize front individual toe and check steering wheel position before we're done. So with this process, I don't have to lock down the steering wheel, or I shouldn't. No, um, it depends. It depends on the type of steering linkage that you have. Uh, most uh, vehicles today have two individual tie rod adjusters where you can adjust individual left hand or right hand toe. Uh, we don't need to lock the steering wheel down. Actually, we're given another way that the vehicle can relax by not locking the steering wheel down. That can actually preload the steering linkages. Okay. okay. Now, there is uh, another type of steering linkage out there known as a relay rod. You fi typically find that on four-wheel drive vehicles, Jeeps, and that kind of thing. You have the relay rod that connects the two uh, steering knuckles together, and then you have the drag link that goes to the pitman arm and the steering gear. Uh, we're not setting individual toe on that particular vehicle. We're actually setting... Um, total toe, that's using the relay rod itself. Then we're using the drag link to adjust steering wheel position. Uh, that one can be a very tough one because it uses a conventional steering gear and we actually lock the steering wheel down in place. And what happens when we're adjusting for steering wheel position, we're moving both wheels left and right. Total toe remains constant. What that actually does, it actually preloads the steering gear a little bit. Okay, so actually on step three of that process, we can actually jack the vehicle up, uh, 
That'll release the load on it. We can adjust your steering wheel position, bring it back down onto the rack, make sure it's still okay before we tighten it down. Um, also, it's very important that you jounce these vehicles also. Um, but uh, that can be a difficult vehicle to get a straight steering wheel, but if you follow those steps, you'll have uh, good success with that. When you jounce the vehicle, these should be free? The lock plates? Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, when we're making measurements and when we're making adjustments to the chassis itself, the slip plates in the rear, the turn plates in the front are gonna be unlocked. When we're rolling the vehicle during compensation, the, the turn plates and slip plates are gonna be locked. So, all the angles are in the green, the tow set, this car's ready to ship. Not quite. One last step we need to do on this particular one here is reset the SAS. It could be for EPS or for stability control, whatever the case may be. And we're going to follow this manufacturer's process here. First thing, we're going to remove the brake pedal repressor from the vehicle. If it's an automatic transmission, we're going to place it in park. If it's a manual transmission, we're going to place it in neutral. After that, we're going to connect the code link, the scan tool, to the OBD2 connector, and then we're going to turn the key to the on position. Once I can do that, I can actually control the aligner through the scan tool. So it can just be at the car and go through the process without going back and forth. I'll turn the ignition on. All right. Okay, so I just hit A4 continue. All right. So now we're reading one of the ECMs for electric power steering. Okay, you turn the steering wheel slightly left, get this bar graph centered. You can see the live output of the steering angle sensor on the right-hand side. Great. K4 continue again. Okay, right now it's reading the ECM again. Switch the ignition off. Turn the ignition off. Count to five. Now, while Ender is doing this, reset procedures are vary from vehicle brand to brand also. So this will take you through the proper pre uh, reset procedures on a given vehicle. Okay, K4 to continue. All right, you can see the calibration was successful. We have a zero steer head, so right now the wheel's in the straight ahead position, and we have a zero on the st steering angle sensor. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and K4 continue once again. It'll do a final read on the ECM. Okay, ignition off, disconnect scan tool. Now I'll just go ahead and it moves on automatically. Now, since this was a manufactured required reset procedure, what I can actually do, it does put this on this printout. There's a code link printout here also. Okay. So can this be done at any bay or where should it be done? Uh, it's best to be done on the alignment rack itself. You know, you're already here, you're finished up the alignment process. Uh, some of the st stability control resets, we also set the lateral and the yaw sensors too. So that requires them to be on a level surface to reset those accurately. Will this alert you if you have to perform a test drive on some route. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Like some of the Volkswagens and things like that. Okay. After the static reset, we're going to do a dynamic reset as far as stability control goes after code link. And if we had a vehicle with a camera in the windshield? Yes. Some are static, some are dynamic. Okay. And some are static and dynamic. So it may require targets to be set up a certain amount of uh, distance from the vehicle itself. And we set these up to the vehicle's uh, thrust line, typically when we use the alignment rack. Some other OEs actually use a center line, but we use thrust line when we do it that way. And we can actually calibrate the camera itself. A common thing uh, when it comes to windshield cameras itself is windshield replacement. Almost guarantee you need a reset after a windshield replacement.
or if the camera gets moved in, the, in its mounting bracket itself, uh, require a reset at that time also. Okay. Or that can affect the accuracy of lane departure warning. Okay. And some are actually active systems these days, so how it steers in the lane. It's kind of funny that you mentioned that Nissan uses their lane departure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a front camera. Yeah. It uses the rear yeah. camera. Oh, yes. Uh, Tesla's doing side view cameras also now, too, for lane change. So it's actually a level two car. So if it doesn't know where the, can where the steering wheel is pointed, there's right. no way for those fancy systems to work. That's exactly. The, the SAS steering angle reset is a big player in a lot of these ADAS systems today. Uh, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, uh, rear traffic safety alert. Uh, coming up here another two years, forward collision warning is going to be mandatory on these vehicles. Okay. Uh, lane change assistant, you know, rear looking radar. All of these require the steering angle reset to be accurate so these systems work correctly. Okay. So once again, we're just following the OE's recommendation after a wheel alignment because changing rear toe or changing front toe will change steering angle output. A couple of things I like to show right here. Uh, of course, we have the, the standard printout right here. We have a couple angles we couldn't adjust, but uh, on the bottom it says right here, Hutter Cone leak communication with the vehicle's onboard computer was successful. So that, that is telling me and document that a reset was done. And I, I can actually get specific with it. And depending on the number of systems that we can reset with this equipment, I can, you know, do an adaptive cruise or a lane departure warning on some vehicles and show the before and after on that. But I'm doing this one. You can see system calibrated EPS electric power steering. And it was done successful. It gives me the before and gives me the after the steering angle reset procedure. So I've documented that I have done it and it's been done successfully. Great. And this is something that's actually tangible. For even sublet later. That is correct. Yes, actually, uh, that could be something charged in addition to the alignment service itself. You know, some re as I said before, uh, some of the procedures here are fairly quick and easy. Other ones a little bit more drawn out. You know, I got to go drive the vehicle for a set amount of time before it resets and relearns. Okay, so that is you know billable time that the customer can get back to. You know, they had to make an investment in the equipment to do this, so this is one way that they can get a return on their investment. So Dave, steering wheel straight, the toe set to zero. This has been a eye-opening experience using Winto. Mm -hmm. Winto is just uh, is, is a way to uh, set toe on a vehicle more accurately, easier, and quicker. Uh, so I would suggest that everybody use Winto.